If you like what we do here over at Acre Interview and would like to support us and help us grow, you can head over to our Patreon channel at patreon.com forward slash Acre Interview where you can donate monthly. We have different tiers ranging from $1 per month right up to $25 with each tier offering different rewards. All the monthly donations greatly help us to continue creating these video and audio interviews so please take a look and I thank you in advance. Enjoy. So Yuriki, what were your first thoughts on uh, the MiG-21? Oh, I thought that, hey boys, that's Mark II fighter, that's a dream to fly to me. Mm -hmm. Dreams come true, be an Air Force fighter pilot with a fighter which is capable of Mark II speeds. Mm -hmm. uh, what version were you assigned to? Well, at that time when I was in training, we had a two two-seater U models. Mm -hmm. And then we have a one squadron, which means 20 MiG. 21 F-13 models, mm -hmm. which is behind me. Mm -hmm. And what was the main role of the MiG uh, for the Finnish Air Force at this point? Uh, it was our, the most capable fighter at the time. We caught them in 1963. And that was, uh, at that time, was a very modern fighter. Cutting edge at the time? At the time, yeah. And still, in uh, when I started training in 60. Uh, in 70, it was very capable, a day fighter, no mm -hmm. radar, so it was a day interceptor. Mm -hmm. But performance-wise, very capable. And so why did uh, Finland actually pick the MiG-21 as their, you know, frontline fighter? Well, in those times we have an uh, agreement with the Soviet Union, cooperation and friendship cooperation, and uh, we were not actually able to buy so easily Western fighters and uh, there, was, uh, there was a problem with the Soviet Union and West Germany and there was a negotiation between Finnish leaders and Soviet leaders and the Soviets said in uh, 61 that uh, West Germany is a threat mm -hmm. to Soviet Union and Finland has to be capable of defending its airspace. Mm -hmm. At that time we have only 12 nuts, mm -hmm. only 12. Wow compared to Swedish Air Force, who had 600 tunnels. We yeah. have 12 nuts. And they, uh, the Rutschow, the leader, said that if Finland does not take care of air defense, they are coming to Finland and take care of that. Really? And uh, Rutschow offered to sell uh, a squadron of their latest fighter, MiG-21 F-13. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how we decided we buy them. Mm -hmm. So it was actually, they were sold to us. Mm -hmm. We never evaluated them. Okay, so you just took them as we were. We just took them, we bought them. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, trade was bilateral that time. So mm -hmm. instead of getting there from Russian cars, we got Russian fighters. Mm -hmm. At that time, that was a good selection. Mm -hmm. It was very capable and we got it by, by trading things. Mm -hmm. So we have to talk about your first flight in the MiG. What was that like? I know you were in the back seat, but it must have been incredible. No, the first flight was in the front seat. Oh, okay. Yeah, in a two-seater. Mm -hmm. We started to fly it immediately by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first takeoff, I remember it. The Fuka took off below 200 kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. The MiG took off at about almost 400 kilometers per hour. Oh. So at initial takeoff, the very sensitive aileron control. I was going like this all the time, and the instructor said that, don't, don't touch the stick. <laughs> and I let it go, it went very steady, but the aileron control was real fast. Mm -hmm. You could roll it in less than one second. Wow, that is... And uh, once you learned to, to uh, be very careful with aileron, it was nice to fly, very sensitive in uh, roll. Mm -hmm. Not so bad in pitch. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the first landing, I thought in final approach that this rocket will never stop to that stamp. The uh, runway looked like a stamp, so I thought that it will never stop on that short distance. Mm -hmm. But using the drag chute, it did stop. And after some two, three flights, you get used to those heights, mm -hmm. high takeoff and landing speeds. Mm -hmm. So did you use the chute every landing? Uh, with the F model and the new model we used because it has small uh, wheels, small brakes, mm -hmm. and uh, 
we normally use the dark suit for every landing mm -hmm. to save the brakes. Yeah. So could you tell us some of the flying you would conduct in your training uh, phase? At that time, the uh, initial training was, uh, it was heritage from Soviet Union. And the first two flights were just going over the pattern mm -hmm. with various airspeeds, configuration and, and fourth and fifth flight were just in the area turning and uh, maneuvering slowly. No aerobatics no, in the first five training flights, mm -hmm. which were just aiming to the first solo flight in the MiG-21F. Yeah. So it was kind of a Russian effect was still there, which was very uh, not so... It, it followed some forms to what they used. Mm -hmm. That was developed later when we learned to fly them, but initially the training was little straight line, mm -hmm. turn left, go straight ahead and Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So what was the MiG like to handle? As I told you, the uh, aileron control was very sensitive and real fast. Mm -hmm. The rudder was all manual. At higher speeds, the rudder force was really heavy. Mm -hmm. It was all manual rudder. And the pitch control was uh, nice because you have the Q feel, which changed the... Uh, it was variable with the airspeed, so the, well, for any airspeed, you have the same stick movement and power for the same G. Mm -hmm. So even at stall or even at Mach 2, we have the same feel in the pitch control. Oh, wow. So it was very nice to fly. Mm -hmm. So what would you say the strengths and weaknesses of the MiG-21 were? The weakness was the uh, poor brakes. You have to use the drag chute and the short endurance. Mm -hmm. With full power, like in the uh, later, I was making the uh, demonstration flights. If you're flying at full afterburner, you run out of fuel in seven minutes. Seven minutes? With full afterburner. So you're very sparingly with it. Yeah, and even uh, you couldn't use the uh, uh, afterburner all the time because the uh, feeding from the wing tanks to the feeder tank was so slow that the feeder tank was emptying and there was a warning. Tank mm -hmm. number three is running out of fuel, even you have in fuel in the wing. So we have to take afterburner off to get time to get the fuel from the wing tanks to the feeder tank. Oh, okay. So you have to follow those lamps mm -hmm. of the tanks. Yeah. Not to run off the fuel from the last tank. You still have wing, wing tanks left. Yeah, that, so. You don't want that to happen. This was their weakness, I think. The weakness, yeah. And the main strength was probably at speed, I'm guessing. Yeah. You could climb at Mach 2. Really? Yeah. Mach 2, wow. If so you were going at uh, about 40,000 feet at Mach 2, you had to either to not climb or to reduce power. Wow. It was overspeeding. Mach 205 was the limiting speed because of the uh, directional stability. Mm -hmm. how, f how many trips did it take you before you actually managed to go to Mach 2? Uh, it was already, I think, on, on our uh, fourth <laughs> solo flight. Just because the, when we reached the altitude of uh, 18,000 meters, we had to offer coffee to older pilots. And also when we exceeded Mach 2, we had to offer coffee to older pilots. So they put <laughs> that in the first part of the training to get free coffee from the junior pilots. <laughs> yeah. So, did you ever conduct uh, DACT with the other types of the time? I was only one year in the squadron, mm -hmm. so I didn't get any of this kind of training mm -hmm. because I was only one year before I went to the test pilot course. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned your squadron there. What squadron uh, were you with and where was it based? That was Fighter Squadron uh, 31 at Kuopio, Ristala. I had no car, no girlfriend, no money because the salary was the lowest in Finnish administration or Air Force or really? anything, yeah. The lowest salary available. That was agreement that we contracted to serve with the lowest A1 salary class in the whole country. So I had no money, so I was very anxious to fly, so I was volunteering for the weekend, week alert service. So mm -hmm. I was sitting there in weekends on Saturdays and Sundays, two hours with a pressure suit. 
and then we changed the pilot for two hours. That must have been uncomfortable though. Oh, it was nice, but uh, very few alerts. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, many times the, uh, the fighter control asked that, is Jyrki sitting there in the cockpit? Yes, he's there again. <laughs> so they alerted me. Okay, take off, heading 240, 10,000 meters, just to get me some flying, <laughs> because I have friends in the fighter control. So they knew you were there already. <laughs> yeah, so they let me fly <laughs> without any uh, intruders in the airspace. So how, how many hours did you get on this, uh, on this tour, on this one year tour? With the F model, I got Five hundred and fifty hours. hours. And do you have any memorable stories from this jet that you can share with us? Well, it was my, uh, I think, was my second or third solo flight, a takeoff. When I before rotating, I checked my airspeed and engine. At, it was two fifty when you rotate initially the nose up. The uh, engine RPM. There are two uh, rotation indicators because it's two spool engine they normally at both are at 100 rpm 100 percent mm -hmm. at this time they were at uh, 95 and 75. Mm -hmm. i said something is wrong i decided and i've just go to idle air brakes open full brake into rack shoot and it stopped 50 meters before the end of the runway Ooh. and uh, i taxied back and checked the engine there's the uh, the uh, jet nozzle in the end, end, end of the engine, it didn't operate. Mm. It normally, it, when you have a military power, it's, it's closed and it opens only with full afterburner. For some reason, it opened at military power, mm. which means that it gives no thrust at all. So no. my, uh, my squadron leader said that, good that you aboard it, you never got off. Mm. So I had crashed if I hadn't aborted it. With 50 meters when I used all the brakes I had. <laughs> On the second, next flight after this one, I took off and wanted to gear up, climbing. The uh, jet pipe temperature went to zero. Oh. I thought, oh no, <laughs> something again. But because there was still thrust and RPM was good, I thought that it may be its instrument. Mm -hmm. So I canceled the mission and burned some fuel and landed. And it was the instrument. But Sorry, I thought so. that, oh no, second flight and oh, one problem again. <laughs>